All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellow fish and accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So right now, uh, uh, this video is a little bit of a bonus. It's a companion piece to the last video I posted. Uh, this is a catch clean cook with some fish that might be considered trash species, or at least one of them. Uh, I'm doing both sea robin and porgy or scup. Uh, and in this, I'm not only just catching and cleaning, but I'm also comparing which of these fish is just the better fish all around to catch, to clean, and most importantly in this, to eat. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to put some of this footage in, and it should be fairly self-explanatory. I uh, hope you enjoy. Here we go. Or something. What do we got? Probably a sea robin or a dogfish. Doesn't feel like a fluke. It's got too much weight to be a porgy, but if it is a porgy, it's a pork chopzilla. I think it's a sea robin. Indeed, it's got a bunch of seaweed. If we get a fluke, we'll think about, or some porgies, we'll think about keeping sea robins. But not until that happens. There we go. You're not the size we want if we're keeping you. Unless we use you for bait. If you don't want that, you gotta let go of that tail. There you go. That didn't take long. Dialed in that fluke bite. That's another fluke, I think. Actually, now it's a sea robin. No, oh, porgy. Now well, this might be our porgy. Just as I said, we're not getting porgies. Let me get this guy. It's not a bad one. And you stole my gulp, but you know what? You're not that big. If you're over 12, I'll keep you. Not that that's what you want to care about or hear, but sad reality and you're 12 I'll let you go even though you're pooping on my head right now just got our first porgy I knew they were down there just haven't connected with one until now if you were a little bigger I'd think about keeping them but he was a little smaller than I wanted we were like 13 14 inches maybe but What's this? Porgy? Doesn't feel like a fluke. Yeah, Porgy. He likes it. Still a little smaller. Man, I hooked the, the crud out of that guy. I don't think that's, I think that's a sea robin, yeah. Big old sea robin. You know what? If we're gonna keep a sea robin, this is the size we wanna keep, so screw it. We're gonna keep a sea robin. And if we get another porgy, we'll keep them too. Worst case scenario, we'll use them for bait. But... That's sea robin. Do a little catch clean cook action. If I can get a keeper porgy, it would be a nice comparison. I've already let go of two, and now I'm sure I'm not gonna catch any of them, but let's be optimistic. And obviously a fluke would be nice right about now too. But I haven't kept any fish for meat for a while, so. Let's see how this goes. Gotta start somewhere. Tide is basically slack. I hear that, they're going for porgies. That feels good. Just don't be a sea robin. I'm sure it's a sea robin. 
Now we got our porgy. It's a little, a little small. It's probably the smallest one we've gotten, so we're gonna let him go. Which I'm sure I'll regret, but whatever. That's probably a good sized porgy. Yeah, yeah, why not? We'll take them. Actually, yeah, you're not that big. I just want one just like a tiny bit bigger than this. Is that too much to ask? If I had that 12 incher again, I'd keep them. Let's get back down. See Robin. Now a big porgy. We'll take him. We'll take him. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good porgy. All right, now we can do the catch clean cut porgy versus Sea Robin. And there can, like Highlander, only be one. Hope I don't get a copyright claim for that. So I'm bleeding this guy out. And some of you guys ask me sometimes about if I worry about sharks, which the answer is generally no. And I may have even seen a, a couple of sharks jump today. Uh, I don't leave these things in the water super long, just long enough to bleed them out, and then I take them back in. Um, obviously, there is the risk of, you know, sharks, but we're in the Northeast, so it's not super common for a lot of sharks to, you know, attack kayakers. Not saying it couldn't happen, but uh, it doesn't happen too often, so... I'm gonna bleed that guy out for maybe five minutes, get him on ice, get him on ice, and let's see if we can get a fluke or something. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We are clearly not on the water anymore. So this is gonna be the point where we engage in the next part of this video, which is the clean and cook portions of this so we have our sea robin on the one hand and we have the porgy on the other obviously these fish aren't the same size uh the sea robin's quite a bit lo uh, longer uh neither of these is what i consider like a huge specimen of either of these types of fish either um but i figure this is a fairly common representation of what you can get for these um i wanted to put these two fish head to head because both of them while different do share some similarities on my perspective neither of which is a fish that i really go out to target exclusively um particularly sea robins i'm never really trying to target them but i catch them all the time meanwhile porgies over here um you've got entire you know boat fleets that devote their entire summer to catching these fish and make a lot of money off of it so it's interesting to compare these because one of them is fairly sought after and the other one is basically just chucked overboard with little to no thought um, so I wanted to compare them and we're going to do it on three criteria, the catch, the clean, the cook. When I say catch, that part's already done uh, in terms of just the enjoyment of fishing for these fish, uh, fighting them and so on. Um, so for instance, sea robins can fight, but I wouldn't consider the fight that you get with them anything too spectacular. Even the best sea robins I've caught, um, it's never been anything too special. Um, Meanwhile, you have porgies, which I would say pound for pound definitely fight a lot harder than sea robins do. And if you took the biggest sea robin ever caught and put it against the biggest porgy ever caught, I think the porgy hands down would be a, a harder fight. So I would have to give the catch to the, the porgy. And even on the average size like this, um, I'd say porgies generally tend to fight harder. So the next step we're going to do is go into the clean. So we're going to clean both these fish. When we look at who wins the clean, just like the porgy won the catch, uh, I'm looking at two things really. One, ease of cleaning. We're just gonna straight fillet these, and I know there's other options for both of these fish. We're just gonna go as approachable as possible, just a, sh a simple, you know, fillet. Which of these is easier or more enjoyable to clean, to get the meat off of? 
that kind of sounded wrong when I said it out loud, whatever. Um, the next part is which one yields more meat. Obviously the sea robin is larger, but then again, I would say this is an average representation of a sea robin size that one would want to keep. Similarly, this is an average ish porgy you know probably like 11 12 inches porgy and probably about 15 16 inch sea robin so without further ado let's get this porgy started and then we'll do the same thing with sea robin i'll probably zoom through a bit and do some quick pauses for my takeaways as we go so there you go okay if step one was to get and catch the fish the next part step two is to get a beer so let's crack into today's beer i think it's a, a rule that you have to be drinking a beer when you clean fish uh, especially in a day off so we got this bronx brewery uh, appropriately appropriately named well-earned pilsner so mm. oh yeah hot day that's exactly what the doctor ordered so let's start with this porgy let's see what kind of meat we can get we're just going to clean them very simply. I haven't cleaned a porgy for a little while, so again, I apologize if I'm not doing this the way that you'd want, but that's why this is my fishing channel, so whatever. Before I take that off, what I like to do is do the other side. Very scaly. No surprise though. Fillet one. Porgy fillet two. And we're not even going to bother with the cheeks. Throw that carcass away. Wipe off our hands. Wipe off the board too. Alright, just remove the meat from the skin. There's one filet. Do have a little bit of a bloodline. There's two. Let's see if we can get some of this bone out of here. It's quite bony. There's the rib cage. Got some pin bones here. Just cut those away. Let's see if we can get rid of a little bit of his bloodline. Yeah, that worked. I'm just trying to shave off this bloodline. All right, that'll do. It's not perfect, but it'll do. And uh, I'm gonna wipe these down better when we get inside, but it's hot out and there's some bugs, so I don't wanna stress the meat either. So porgy, done. Okay, next step is the sea robin. So same idea, no surprise, very bony, very spiny. Quite a rib cage, so I'm not gonna go nuts here because I don't wanna pop open the guts but very different build. A lot of the body is head, um, but there is a lot of meat here. And I'd like to say it's cleaner meat too than the porgies from what I remember. I mean, I've kept a few sea robins from time to time, especially when maybe I just get one fluke and I need to pad out the meal a little bit more. Yeah, we got some nice clean meat there. Let's do the other side. Some people really like to skin these things. Never actually done it, but I've seen it done. Yeah, I got a little close to the guts. 
really feel a lot of pin bones too. Watch that. Again, no master cleaning either of these fish, but get the broad strokes done. All right, so I don't know how much of that we just got. My camera's been acting up a little bit today. Sometimes it'll just stop recording, and it's not because, or maybe stop, I don't know, I haven't gone through today's footage, but it'll kind of just pause and uh, I won't even bore you with the details, but I apologize, apologize if I didn't get that whole cleaning, but here is the sea robin, and let's put that side by side with the porgy. So we got the porgy, which was clearly a smaller fish, but I would say it's probably about the same yield from the porgy as the sea robin. Um, we did have to cut away a fair amount of bones from each of them. Obviously, neither of these fish is going to feed you by itself unless you do like a, a sandwich or a po boy type, po boy type thing uh, or some tacos. Um, but again, it's almost an equal amount of meat. But looking at it the way it is, it almost seems like the porgy is much more, how do I want to put this, efficient, I guess you should say. You get more meat out of this smaller fish than a slightly or I guess significantly larger fish. So um, I give the porgy the yield. I don't love cleaning porgies. I get finned by them a lot. Um, and that was a smaller one, but I can say, you know, when you get into a rhythm with porgies, it gets a lot easier. But if you're just cleaning one, it's kind of uh, disheartening because it's, you know, you feel like you get so little out of it and all the scales that you have to deal with. Meanwhile, I would not say that the sea robin was a fun fish to clean, but I will tell you that this meat definitely looks like it's of higher quality. I didn't need to trim away bloodline from the sea robin like I did with the porgy. I did need to trim bones away, and clearly for the size of the fish, you got a lot less meat because a lot of that um, of the body is taken up by head. But I'm gonna give this a tie. I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna give a point to both of them. Um, the porgy simply because it's more, you know, efficient, you get more meat for the size of the fish. But I'm gonna say the meat quality, I think looks a bit better on the sea robin. So to decide this, we got, two points for the porgy one for the sea robin the best that can happen for the sea robin is it's going to be a tie uh if i think it tastes better so let's get these inside uh, i'm probably gonna cook these tomorrow i'm gonna let them cool off uh, and then we'll get to a, a straight up cook of these two and decide which one tastes better all right so we are back it is the next day and now we're going to do the final portion of this the actual cooking of the sea robin and the porgy so I want to stress, uh, I'm not doing anything too ambitious right now. Kind of like my old Catch Clean Cook series. Just the most approachable technique. Butter, salt, pepper, that's it. Uh, and then we're going to try the two side by side. And we're going to try and decide which one is the best when there is a tide. I don't know. Forget what I just said. But let's cook these fish and see how it shakes out. I just drop that butter on there. Pan's already preheated. I'm gonna turn it down a little. This, these fillets are pretty thin, so it shouldn't take too long for them to cook through. Uh, at this point, I'm not even gonna talk about which one I am cooking, because I wanna be as objective as possible, because I'm not gonna be the only one trying this. I'm gonna have my wife try this off camera and see what she thinks, so. I'll put in the, you know, flash on the camera what I'm cooking. Let's start with these guys. Those of you watching probably know what I'm cooking if you even have the remotest idea of what kind of fish I'm working with right now. But here's the first round. Throw that aside. A little salt and pepper. Should not take too long to cook this through. I'm just going to wait for the meat to start to lose some of that translucency. And then we are going to flip it. And uh, yeah, all right, so we gave this about two and a half minutes, flipped it over, put a little more salt and pepper on it. This one is done. So we're gonna set this one aside for a hot second. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with the other fish. Probably throw a little bit more butter on that pan just to keep it good. 
And now the other fish. Actually, spread that around a little. As I said in the previous part of the video, it's almost about the same amount of fish, despite the size. A little salt. A little pepper. And we'll let that hover for another minute or two. Okay, this next one, this second fish is done. Again, uh, I'm not saying what it is. I'm flashing it on the screen because I will be trying this with my wife and I don't want to potentially you know, spoil her or sway her decision on which one's the best. So there it is, fish number two, ready for eating. And yeah, now it's the best part for the final criteria. Which of these two fish tastes better? As we know right now, Corgi is slightly ahead with the fight, the catch. We got a tie for the clean section, and now we have to decide which one cooks and tastes better. So let's pick up with that right now. Okay, so they're both here. What do you think? Which one do you want to try first? Point to it. I'll go with the further one. This one, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I know what it is. I'm gonna try it first, and I'll bring it over to you. I'll take another bite. Take one from that part. It's more of a full body filet. What do you think? It's nice and flaky. It's got a good meatiness to it. Um, not fishy. You know, like a little bit of fishiness. Not a lot. It's like an aftertaste. Not like the carp we ate that one time. Yeah, well, that's another story. <laughs> I wouldn't even call that fishiness. That was just like mineralness. All right, that one's done. It's tasty. I agree. Like, nothing wrong with that, right? Mm -mm. Um, let's take one more bite, because there's like a little bit of a bloodline, too. This piece maybe is a little more fishy. Here, try this piece. Um, yeah, no, I think it had a, a good chew to it, nice and meaty. Okay, so would you eat that again? Like, if I brought more of that home, you'd be okay with it? Yeah, definitely. I would, too. Uh, we've already, I've already said in my first part the issues I had with cleaning both of these fish, but that leads part two, so here we go. Ooh, that already looks juicier. Yeah, well, let's... I'm gonna save that piece for you. That part looks a bit better. Okay. I'll take this second best slice. I know what I want to say, but I don't want to sway your decision. Hmm. Definitely like lighter, if if I can call it that. Um not as rubbery as the other one. Um, maybe a little flakier. I know the ju it's very juicy. To Definitely me. juicier. I think you know. I mean, granted, I cooked these the same way. I would cook them potentially different if I had them both. I like that better. Do you me like too. that? Yeah. Like it's it almost yeah it's it's chewier, lighter, juicier, more flavorful. Mm -hmm. And whatever flavor there is isn't quite as fishy. I like that better. I agree. Me so, too. So what do you think you just ate? Are you allowed to tell me what you brought home? Uh, it was a porgy and a sea robin. Is that the porgy? No, you just ate, you like the sea robin better. Oh my gosh. And so did I. So I think the sea robin honestly tastes better than porgy. If you had to choose which one of these you'd want again, would you eat both of them again? Yeah, definitely. Which I just might prepare the porgy differently. As would I, but again, that's a different different uh, cooking session. This is just head to head, you know, it's like the, the slice of a pizza at a pizza joint. You, you don't base it on their, their best slice, their special. You base it on the cheese plain slice. And this is like the plain slice version. I think plain as is, you know nothing about cooking, that tastes better. Agreed. All right. Yeah. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, three criteria, catch, clean, cook. I said the porgy was more fun to catch, and in general, I think you'll have more fun catching porgies, though sea robins can put up a heck of a fight, and they're very tenacious and aggressive. The clean, 50-50. Uh, I think both of them aren't entirely fun to clean, so I gave them both a point. And then the cook, um, we both agreed that sea robin, even when my wife had no idea which one was which, she said she uh, enjoyed sea robin more than porgy, and I agree. 
So that's two points each, which basically makes it a tie. Uh, but honestly, you know, if you're serving one of these for dinner and you have people that maybe don't eat a lot of fish uh, and you don't know much about cooking, this is the only part they're gonna care about, uh, and that's the cook. And I would give that to the sea robin. So long story short, uh, sea robin is definitely one of the most underrated eating fish I think there is in the Northeast. Um, if you go to other parts of the world, they have similar species of, I believe they're called gurnards or whatever. They're like one of the highly most sought after fish to eat. Uh, I remember when I was in Europe, I'd see very similar fish to sea robins, you know, on display on ice at fish markets. So definitely consider keeping these things. Um, there are so many of them in the water. Uh, and they're, you know, you get a bunch of these, it's an easy meal. So. That's gonna do it for this. Uh, tell me what you think. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you think sea robin is in fact a better eating fish than porgy? Do you think I got it wrong? Obviously be kind, but that being said, if you wanna see more stuff like this in the future, please let me know in the comments and also like and subscribe while you're here, yada yada. Uh, more stuff to come soon. I'll catch you on the water. As always, goodbye from fishing.